back to Ashton Gate. It feels so good saying that with fans here. Another opportunity, and he's onside, and it's two for Bristol City at this time. And it's in! An early goal for Bristol City, and Andy Vyman is back! And it goes clear ahead of Bristol City, and they are level. And it's a first goal for Andy King for his boyhood club. Hello and welcome to Robins TV for another championship away game for Bristol City as they travel up the M5 to take on West Bromwich Albion this afternoon. Match day 14 for Nigel Pearson's boys looking to bounce back from the shock of Tuesday night and to cause an upset against the Baggies today if they can. Now to see if they can do it I'm pleased to say that joining me for this one is friend of the show Mr Allrounder Peter Trigo. Peter welcome back to Robins TV. Afternoon Dan how are you? Nice to be on this side of the table for for my first game this season. I know, right, it's nice, it's really good. Um, before we get into the football, I want to ask how your summer has been. Obviously, I, I think, if, if you don't know, uh, Peter's uh, cricket career is finished now, but you're, you're moving on to a, another world, another sport. Yeah, um, I mean, it's, it's, been a, it's been a bit of a whirlwind, really. Uh, turning 40 this year, still being a sportsman. Um, you know, a month after the season, I've already put on a kilo. Uh, you know, the training stopped and all that sort of stuff. But no, it was... Um, it was. It's, I think it's always tough when a sportsman finishes a career. You know, you, you kind of back yourself to be ever young, but um, you know the time certainly uh, certainly was up on my playing days. But you're getting into. I think I'm right. I follow you on Twitter, of course. You're getting into golf now, and you're getting quite good at it as well. Yeah, well, I've been a scratch golfer for for, for many years, or one, two handicaps somewhere around there. So I've really taken that seriously. Um, got the handicap to, to plus three and decided to turn professional. So I'm not done with professional sport, but certainly done uh, with running around and diving around <laughs> in cricket fields. Yeah, absolutely. Don't blame you at all. See, Mr. All-Rounder, I told you. Uh, a mixed bag for, for City to start the season, I think it's fair to say. A few good wins on the road, disappointment at home. But today's game, what do you reckon? Can they, can they pull off an ups upset today? Well, obviously, the way, away form has been fantastic. I was at the, uh, at the ground on Tuesday night against uh, Nottingham Forest. Obviously, that sort of unravelled in that last 90 seconds of the game. Um, but one thing, you know, Bristol City have on their side is incredibly passionate, loyal fans. I mean, I was, um, you know, coming to the, going to the ground in, in you know, a few weekends time and I invited a friend of mine to come to the Lansdowne suite and he was like, no, I've got my season ticket in the stand. <laughs> I've been sat there for every single game and all the defeats at home. Um, I want to be there for that first win. So the, the loyalty from the fans, I believe, you know, a couple of thousand have travelled up the, uh, the, the M5, as you say. So, um, you know, they certainly get the support and, you know, the away form is strong. Yeah, absolutely. I had 2,000 fans uh, travelling up the M5 today. I mean, the task in hand today is a difficult one, isn't it? I don't think it's unfair to say that City are the underdogs, but football isn't written on paper, is it? Yeah, of course. I mean, I mean, no testament to that is what happened on Tuesday night. I mean, you know, in the stands, we were all celebrating pretty much with that, you know, 90 seconds left. But I think that would have certainly taken the wind out of the, the team sales. So it's very much on the, the manager and the support staff and the leaders within the dressing room to get the boys up for today's challenge, because no doubt it is a challenge, but I have full faith they can uh, bring home three points. And in some respects, I mean, when you do go in as the underdog, you'd have experienced this in, in cricket, I'm sure, that... It, it doesn't necessarily mean you sort of go into it thinking, you know, nobody expects anything of us here. They might have just, you know, really still a bit of pressure on themselves in that regard. A hundred percent, Dan. I spent 24 years as an underdog. <laughs> I was more than happy being yeah. the underdog. But yeah, I think there's, there's something about that. The underdog spirit, you know, mm. backed into a corner. You know, the boys have been, you know, bitterly disappointed. You know, 89 minutes of hard work to, to let three points slip against a, a top side in Nottingham Forest. So, um, you know, there's going to be that bounce back. There's going to be that desire to, to, to right the wrongs off Tuesday. So I expect to see a pretty strong performance today. OK, well, if they are to get the three points this afternoon, let's have a look at the team that will do it. Before we get to Bristol City, we'll have a look at our hosts, West Brom. And this is how they set up today. They make two changes from a midweek loss to Swansea City. As former Bristol City man Callum Robinson drops to the bench in place of Jordan Hugill. And Robert Snodgrass comes in for the suspended Jake Livermore in the middle of the park. Three at the back for West Brom. As uh, Matt Clark, Semi Ajayi and Kyle Bartley retain their places. And then it's a front three at the other end of Grant, Hugill and Matt Phillips should provide City a few problems this afternoon. On the bench for them, David Button, Keane Bryan, Kipre, Reach, Gardner Hickman, Dick Grady Diangana and as I say, Callum Robinson is there as well. And for Bristol City... It looks a little bit like this. One change from midweek sees the goal scorer Alex Scott drop to the bench 
in place of uh, the returning Han Noah Masengo. He starts in centre midfield with Matty James as perhaps Nigel Pearson looks to add a little bit of solidity in the middle. Other than that, it's as you were with Dan Bentley keeping his place in the sticks. Same back five of uh, George Tanner, Thomas Callas, Rob Atkinson, Nathan Baker and Jay De Silva. Andy Vyman sits just ahead of uh, Han Noah Masengo and Chris Martin, Naki Wells and Chris... Uh, Naki Wells and Chris Martin are up top, I should say, uh, on the bench for City. Max O'Leary, Danny Simpson, Cam Pring, Alex Scott, Tyreek Backinson, Callum O'Dowder and Sam Bell. So there you go. Masengo is back in the starting lineup. City have missed his energy, haven't they? Yeah, no surprise. Obviously, he's been uh, had a bit of a layoff with the, with the hamstring. But, you know, even last year, we got a sense that Nigel Pearson has a lot of time for what Masengo brings to the team. So, no surprise, he's slotting back into the starting eleven. Yeah, they continue with that back five. I mean, we just spoke about uh, Tuesday night. They continue with that back five up until about the 90th minute on Tuesday. I thought that looked really strong, that defensive setup. Yeah, something uh, I've always admired, you know, about the, the, the team, in, in particular the centre-backs led by the, the captain, Thomas Callas. I mean, absolute rocks, aren't they? It's just... Um, you know, it's just keeping up that concentration for the 90 minutes. That's that's the the um, the art of the game, I suppose, isn't it? You know, it's um, identifying moments within the game. You know, maybe if uh, if they had those like 90 seconds again, as I keep saying, on Tuesday night, they would have done things differently. I, I, I don't know. It's um, it's a tough situation, but you know. The important thing is there's a reaction from uh, from Tuesday night today. Yeah, absolutely. That's what we need to see today. OK, that's the lineup uh, for the Robins. Time to hear now from the man who picked that team. Nigel Pearson is with Dave Barton. N Nigel, let's get in the team news. So one change today, Hanno Masenga in for Alex Scott. Woo! What are you looking for from that change? Well, it's just the way that, you know, I, I wanted to try and have a, a threat still up top. Um, getting Andy, Naki and Chris in there. Um, I mean, I thought Alex did really well the other night, but uh, we're just going to be, yeah, we we don't want to be too um, trying to be too safe. It's about trying to get cause them problems. We know we're going to have to deal with quite a lot of uh, aerial bombardment and quick play. They're a good team, very good team. They they're very disciplined, uh, but of course we've got to. We've got to have a goal threat. I think it's important that we try and get the balance right. So, look, um, our away form's been good. We can't rely on it all season. Um, but I, I, I'm not, you know, all I'm looking at is getting a, a, a good squad performance, team performance. The, the, the bench is going to be really important for us today too. Um, so let's see how it goes. 2,000 Bristol City fans will be here. Their encouragement will be pretty crucial as well, won't it? Well, it has been all season, home and away. And, uh, you know, we've, we've been able to deliver form away from home, unfortunately not at home so far. Um, we recognise how important they are for us. And, uh, yeah, we want to get the performance right. Uh, and it's up to us to do that. Go well today, Nigel. Cheers, thanks. Nigel Pearson there commenting on those 2,000 fans that have travelled up to cheer on the boys this afternoon. They're definitely uh, going to cheer the boys on as much as they can, try and pick them up. But after midweek, how do coaches and the staff pick up those players off the floor, dust them off and get them to go again so quickly? Well, that is that classic uh, comment, isn't it, or, or phrase, which is man management. I mean, mm. I think as a sportsman, you don't fear losing because losing is part of, of, of the game. It's part of what we do. But I think the important thing is to feel like you've got the backing of the management. And like I said, there, there would have been certain areas where Nigel may, may have pulled people up, you know, not doing certain roles that he'd, he'd identified. But the important thing is for the squad, the guys in the start 11, the big fear as a sportsman is losing your place, losing your place in the start 11 or in the squad. And providing I think Nigel can, you know, keep enforcing the players with his backing, I think that's the important thing. And how do a squad do that within themselves, within the group? There must be leaders that step up and go, right, come on, guys, and you know, give those messages within the group, within the dressing room. Yeah, I mean, it's, you've got to dwell on... Um, you, you, you've got to identify the areas and where the game you know, didn't go to plan. But there are so many good things. Like I said, 89 minutes of, of, of fantastic football. One nil up, everyone's buoyant. So you've got to reflect back on the, on the, on the good things. Um, you know, it is about... I mean, the world of football is... is um, you know, is, is the way it is. And we obviously have discussed many times that the championship is a really, really tough league. <laughs> and you're going to have your ups and downs, but it's, like I said, reflecting on the positives. I think within themselves, I think it's important to, 
um, you know, as a sportsman, you've got to drive yourself. But um, providing Nigel is giving them that feeling that, you know, they're on the right track and in, in the, in the results are just around the corner, I think that's an important thing. And I'm sure he's doing that. OK, so as the players get those final preparations in, let's hear from uh, one of those key members of the squad now, Jay De Silva. Uh, in a difficult game against Bournemouth, he was a standout performer and he's been speaking to our man James Crawley this week. Well, Jay, it was a disappointing uh, Tuesday night. What was the response uh, in the week heading into this West Brom game? The game being like? Uh, yeah, obviously Tuesday night was uh, very painful um, to, to lose a game like that. Uh, everyone uh, very frustrated, very hurt. But uh, yeah, leading into this next game, that's a kind of good thing about football. You can always turn around very quickly, and uh, we got to focus on the on the next game coming up. So yeah, it's been very positive. Um, all the boys are willing to show show some some uh, response, a big response, um, and that's what we need to do on Saturday. How do you? I guess when you come back together, how do you ensure that you can? get a response or get yourselves in a place where you can be in a, you know, a really good place to be able to give a, a good response as possible? I think it's important to um, address the the problems in the game um, and then move on very quickly, um, knowing we have to refocus onto the next game. Um, trying to stay as positive as possible, I think that's, a, that's the main thing. Um, keep them, keep them positive, um, keeping uh, the mood high in the camp and then uh, yeah, just staying focused on, on the next task. Uh, away form has obviously been much better it tastes, uh, compared to home form. Is there anything you can maybe put that down to? Does that give you any kind of confidence heading to the Hawthorns on Saturday? Um, yeah, it's not nothing exactly I can put my finger on. Um, but yeah, going into an away game, knowing the, the form that we've, we've been in away from home, um, the massive support that we get, um, which is very important in a away game. Um, gives does give us confidence. Um, I think just sticking at it, um, sticking to what we do, and just finding something within ourselves to to get that win at home, and that will um, that will change a, a lot a lot of things. But I think it's um, a sellout for this weekend. Um, what's your message to the fans who are going to make that journey, who may well have been, you know, frustrated, disappointed after Tuesday night? Um, just to stay with us. Um, once again, we need we need your support, um, home and away. Um, this is a, it's a big one, and uh, just staying together, staying with us, keeping the support, being that twelfth man for us. And uh, yeah, we appreciate uh, all the support. When you look at West Brom, um, we're sorry, they're third in the table now. You know, flying high. What kind of test do you uh, expect against them? Uh, yeah, it'll be another tough game. Um, every game in the champ is is tough. Um, we know what, what what their strengths are, but um, ultimately focusing on us, we just need to be the best version of ourselves to, to win the game. Jay De Silva there chatting to James Crawley. I, P Peter, I could talk about Jay till the cows come home, quite frankly. He's a remarkable left-back for, for Bristol City. And one of our best, you were talking about some other left-backs that City have had, or defenders that, that use their height to their advantage. I mean, people talk about Jay De Silva and his height all the time, but he uses it so well, doesn't he? Or lack of. Or lack of height, exactly. Well, I think <laughs> what, you know, one of the things with uh, being slightly shorter of stature, you know, great balance, mm. you know, um, you know, you've got your, your, your taller guys who can sometimes look a bit gangly, but he's, got, he's a fantastic athlete, he's fast, he's composed on the ball. Um, I, I remember playing non-league football with the next Bristol City legend, Andy Llewellyn, who was also, you know, he's probably a five foot five, five foot six, but I can't ever remember him missing a header because his timing was so good. A little nudge in the back at the right times. You know, these players, you know, when they have probably a, a, um, a, a physical mismatch, they use their ability, you know, their football brain to, to get out of trouble. And, Jay certainly does that. Yeah, he's up against it today as well, isn't he? Up against Darnell Furlong, Carlin Grant. I think Carlin Grant took about a minute to score in midweek, but he'd absolutely back Jay De Silva to give as good as he gets today. Yeah, of course, it's going to be a physical battle. As he, um, Nigel mentioned, there's going to be an aerial threat. Obviously, that's going to have to be negated in some way, shape or form. But certainly when the ball's on, on the deck, um, you know, Jay De Silva does a, does a grand job. He certainly does. OK, we are counting down to kick off here at the Hawthorns. The City goes searching for three points. On the way, we ask Matty James the quick-fire questions and we take a trip down memory lane as well. All on the way after this. We heard the UK's yoghurt-loving superfans wanted something super thick and homegrown. 
Our yogurt that's high in protein, low in fat, and naturally low in sugar. Fit for breakfast, lunch, and everything in between. But such a thing didn't exist. So we made our own. Yo Valley Super Thick, lovingly made on home soil. Welcome back to Robins TV. We are less than 15 minutes away from kickoff. Peter Trigo is alongside me. Um, Peter, when you get to these moments, 15 minutes to go, the nerves must be starting to kick in now a little bit. Yeah, this is what the hard works, you know, all the training, all the stuff you do in the background. This is, this is the fun time, or it should be the fun time for the players. They'll be uh, champing at the bit to get out there, I'm sure. Players just making their way off the field now. Naki, Wells and Chris Martin there. Got a job on their hands today. I think West Brom, are the, they've conceded the third least goals. They're the third meanest team in the championship. Got a job on their hands, those two, today to try and get something going, get the ball in the back of the net. Yeah, certainly. I, I think that's obviously vital. You have to score goals to, mm -hmm. to win games of football. Chris Martin, I think, has got a big job um, holding, the, holding the ball up. If West Brom are going to have uh, moments of dominance, you're going to have to have a guy up there just to take the heat off the rest of the team. So, massive role for him today. And how do you think City will approach this today? We've seen on previous away trips, I'm thinking against Peterborough not too long ago, that they do like to play with some intensity. They don't like to sit back. And away from home, it's, it's really going for it and, and putting the team to the sword. Yeah, I mean, that's, the, that's what you want to see here at Ashton Gate as well. You know, that brand of football, that, that positive brand of football. Obviously, you know, Nigel mentioned it in his, um, in his uh, interview earlier. He wants to play positive football. So, you know, it's on to the players now. You know, the platform's there. There's no point in going to a ground... Um, you know, or, or, or you know, playing against a team like West Brom and go into it trying to scrape a scrape a draw. You've got to go out there, all guns blazing. Yeah, we've seen a couple of faces there from the uh, from the City bench. Tyreek Backinson, uh, Alex Scott. I've seen there alongside them as well. It's quite a strong bench, quite a youthful bench. And those sort of young players, they don't feel any fear. We were talking earlier about how big the Hawthorns is. But young players, Sam Bell's on there as well. They don't feel any fear when they're that young, do they? Yeah, I think the longer you go into your career, you sort of pick up scar tissue from mm. going to certain grounds and having bad <laughs> games. But, you know, a lot of the squad don't have that. Like I said, it's, you know, you go to these big grounds, you know, West Brom spent plenty of time in the Premier League over the last decade. You know, this is a massive day. You know, go out, enjoy yourself, express yourself. Show everyone what you can do. Absolutely. And Alex Scott, he had a great midweek, didn't he? It'd be nice to see him come off the bench and just get a few more minutes under his belt and become that player that he's being tipped to become. We might see that later today. Yeah, he certainly did. I think he was very, very impressive against Forrest. I mean, I noticed him um, before he was subbed off, you know, having a bit of cramp, you know, just testament to how much work he put into that game. So it'd be great to see him put in another performance at some stage today. And how does Nigel Pearson deal with those young players? Because we said they have no fear and sometimes they just need to be perhaps reined back a little bit so that they can m play the way Nigel Pearson wants to play. So how do, how do in, in sport, young players sort of get dealt with like that? Yeah, well, it's, it's difficult for me to say because obviously cricket is very different, mm. different to, to football. But it's, it's brilliant to be able to um, blood a young player into a, into a professional team 
bit by bit. You know, as a young player, you're going to be all guns blazing. Your beans are going to be going. You're going to be so excited to get out there. Sometimes you just need holding backs, you know, on, on occasion. But it's great to, to, to see these young guys out, this young local lads representing their team. I think that's going to give a massive dynamic to the club moving forward. And somebody perhaps not on the, the young side anymore is midfielder Matty James. You might, won't mind me saying that. Uh, he's been an ever constant for this side. But if you had to pick his favourite player growing up, who would it be? Let's find out. Matty James, 30, centre midfield. Instagram or TikTok? <laughs> Instagram. Clean sheet or a last minute winner? Mm, last minute winner. Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. Hot weather or cold weather? Hot weather. Your dream holiday destination? Uh... Caribbean. Eat in or eat out? Eat out. Nike or Adidas? Nike. Spotify or Apple Music? Spotify. What is your dream car? The mm, Lamborghini. Easy tap in or a worldy assist? Easy tap in. Premier League or World Cup? Premier League. Invisibility or super strength? Invisibility. The celebrity you'd most like to meet? Uh, Bradley Cooper. Are you a morning person or an evening person? Morning person. Cats or dogs? Dogs. Cardio or weights? Cardio. French or Spanish? Spanish. Your favourite player growing up? Paul Scholes. Pasta or pizza? Pizza. And tough one to finish, Nige or Kingy? <laughs> uh, I'm going to go with the gaffer. <laughs> of course he was going to go with the gaffer. Of course he was. Uh, very classy player is Matty James. There is a bit of Paul Scholes about him when we see him play, isn't it? And no wonder he's picked Paul Scholes. He plays in that very similar sort of style, leading from the middle of the park. Yeah, classy player. You can, you know, ooze his experience, but he's bottled it there with that question. <laughs> Uh, I think he can tackle a little bit better than Paul Scholes, though. Um, he's going to have to lead this team out on the pitch today, isn't he? He's going to have to lead from the front. Yeah, of course. You, you, you lean on your, your senior players on, on, on big games like this. And, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure he'll come to the party. He's uh, Nigel's go-to man. Absolutely. OK, we are almost ready for the, uh, the players coming out. But before we do, let's have a look at some of the classic goals at the Hawthorns down the years. Starting way back in 1993, when a certain Mr Tinian scored the winner. Burgess with the free kick. Now Lowell under pressure, but makes his clearance. Straight back by Bryant. O'Regan. Too many red shirts there. It's Scott. Tinian. Little shimmy. And the finish to match it. Bryant Tinian with a goal just before half-time to set the Bristol City fans wild behind that goal.
Well, it's time to step out on the turf as Bristol City go to battle with West Brom. A reminder, if you're watching this pre-match show on Facebook and YouTube,